Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing? Um, greetings in late March. Oh, it's actually the day that the, oh, I'm sorry, I'm moving this camera around. Ah! It's um, the spring equinox. Woo! So I have a second grader that's out of school now because of the virus. So um, we're trying to look at it and see. It's a myth. Eggs don't balance on the equinox. So I hope everyone is doing well. I know that seeing all the stuff on the news and um, across the world with the world pandemic of this COVID-19 um, is very difficult. So anybody that is chronically ill is going to be very worried. Whether you're over the age of 50, you have any lung conditions, um, autoimmune diseases, um, my personal neurologist says, I have a good immune system. I can go out and do that. <laughs> Don't mention the ALS and heart disease and everything else. Uh, diabetes. Wee! Yeah, high risk. Um, so if you're going to be doing anything like physical therapy, going to doctor visits, um, talk to your health care providers um, and follow their recommendations. Um, one thing, uh, Medicare, if you have Medicare, Medicare is approved telehealth or telemedicine, so you can call or video chat, um, or if you can't chat, your um, caregiver um, can actually talk um, for you. Um, I just ordered the Toby gaze wear, so hopefully um, I can get my voice measured, and um, we'll see that as I get into that stage. But you can actually do that. So how are you doing? I hope okay. I know this is very concerning. Um, you know, with the way that, you know, there have been pandemics since the beginning of time. I mean, man is um, dealt with them. I mean, you think about from the Black, um, Black Death, you know, the plague that hit Europe and the known world at that time, um, at the onset of the Dark Ages. Um, to all the influenza that's, that have gone on. Um, most re recently, the H1N1. Though, um, I think that this one may be um, more similar to the Spanish uh, flu from 1918. Um, with any pandemic, there are going to be people that um, will get sick. And in this country, they're guessing that it's going to be anywhere between 30 to 60 percent and because this is a novel or new virus some will get um, mild symptoms some will get severe symptoms some will die most of us will survive it will be okay no matter what things will be okay at some time okay uh, so the way the virus works is it um, binds to the um, ACE2 in, um, receptors in our lungs. Um, and the coronavirus with the little crown, little things stick in there and start replicating. So if you are um, in a more advanced stage of ALS, MND, if you have to use a cough assist machine, if you have a trach, you know, you definitely want to be very careful at this time. Um, you want to make sure that you stay clean, that you're, the people that um, provide care for you, whether it's a family member or um, staff, um, make sure that everyone's following the hand washing protocols, um, you know, the area is kept clean, you know, you can use um, a 10% bleach solution on inanimate objects, not on you, not drinking, nobody should be drinking bleach, it doesn't cure autism, it doesn't cure coronavirus. Um, can end up in the ER. Uh, you know, Lysol. Um, don't drink Lysol. Don't spray it on your body. Don't spray it in your mouth. Um, now, I'm just saying, you know, there, there's things that people are posting on social media. You know, there's the cranks come out during a pandemic. There are snake oil salesmen out there. There's not one thing that you can eat, not one thing you can drink, not one thing you can apply that will protect you against a microbe. You can wash your hands, you can keep things clean, you can keep social distancing, but if it gets there, it gets there. And, you know, innately in our body, we have a beautiful immune system that can work 
and can fight the virus, um, getting proper nutrition, and that's something that's a big concern for people with ALS MND, keeping good nutrition. It will help you with this disease, especially with your breathing. You have to keep the nutrition proper. Um, having a good vitamin base, you know, um, it's been wintry, you know, making sure that your vitamin D, now be careful with vitamin D supplementation. Vitamin D is a fat soluble drug, uh, vitamin. You can get toxic from it if you take too much of it. Most of us are lacking, but you don't take mega doses of anything. Mega doses of vitamin D, zinc, or vitamin C. If you take too much vitamin C, you're going to end up with diarrhea. And toilet paper is hard to come by now. Um, so just staying clean, um, you know, get, you, laundry, household, you know, doorknobs, um, you know, just, and washing hands. I mean, you have to find some base that you can find peace at, you know, whether it's prayer, meditation, finding that um, balance each day, that, um, <sighs> that piece of peace that you can find is very important. You know, prayer can help, meditation can help, um, good sleep is important for your immune system too. So stay clean, sleep, eat well, and um, stay away from sick people. <laughs> if anybody has a fever, ask them not to come around you. Um, staying away from large crowds of people, you know. Staying out of the ER if possible, important. So in my area uh, this week, we have had um, quite the eventful week. <laughs> Last week, my little one was on spring break and that's when we started, we had our first community um, transmission of COVID-19 in my area. It was the rodeo. So uh, the rodeo had to close down and everyone that was there for barbecue night, I'm sure all the vegans are happy. No, I'm just joking, just joking. Um, you know, there are di different cases that come out of that, but of course with there's a trip um, other people went to Egypt and um, some people came back sick. You know, it's, it's the start of what will cause community, trans, uh, community transmission. So there's been several cases popping up where they don't have any known contacts. It's a novel new virus, so it's going to go through our population. Um, what we want to do is not have the health system overwhelmed. So that's what you hear about the flattening the curve. You know, it's all over the news. I don't want to go over, over and over again. So forgive me if I have. Um, you know, just being smart, you know, and, you know, not forgetting to keep in balance. You know, there's, if you watch the news all the time, you're going to get extremely anxious, extremely nervous, and fear. Those of us that have ALS, MND, have a, a terminal illness. So, you know, we face that fear um, at the diagnosis, you know, and at different times. You never know when you're gonna go. You never know what's going to happen. Um, you could get the virus and have a mild little sniffles and be okay. You could get the virus and get really sick and be okay. You can get the virus and die. Nobody knows what it actually will do to you. So just trying to prevent that infection is, a, is the goal. Though, you know, having 30 to 60% of us, you know, we're most likely going to be exposed. You just want to reduce um, the, uh, you want to be able to not have it where it's the overwhelming time when people are, um, all the ventilators are being used, all of that is going, you know, it's not a good situation that way. Um, but there's, you know, a lot, a lot of good things going on now too. If you think about it this way, this um, virus is an RNA virus, coronaviruses are RNA viruses. And now that we have all of the world, the scientists, health systems, private companies, they're all looking into finding a cure for this. Um, you know, the molecular uh, biology folks, um, hey, you know, if they start working on the RNA viruses and any side information may be beneficial for those of us that have ALS due to any genetics, 
that are based in a maladaptive um, RNA tran or transcription. So, hey, there, that's hope, right? Make sure you take care of you. Make sure you take care of your people. Make sure you take care of your community, you know, whether it's posting things on um, social media that are happy, um, you know, talking to a friend, talking to somebody that's elderly and lonely in their house, um, you know, just staying in the community. How we get through things to, is together. It's just not together right here within six feet, um, together in a community, you know, whether, you know, you can pray for each other, you can m meditate, um, you can do things to help, you know, I mean, I, I retired from nursing last week, um, and I'm not able to go out and nurse right now, which kind of makes me sad. I mean, you know, I've, the nurse that, um, I got inspired to be a nurse when I was in fourth grade by seeing a uh, presenter in social studies, you know, why you should always expose kids to different um, people. You never know who's going to pick up on what. So she was showing us um, a special presentation on the yellow fever and the victims. You know, they gave them little bits of water, not whole bunches of water, but little bits, and they threw it black blood. Um, I guess yellow fever must do something to the liver. Um, and, you know, they helped people survive. So I wanted to help the people. So I've been through different pandemics and epidemics and different illnesses. So, you know, almost identically, every time there's a pandemic, there is this panic, there is this worry, there is this fear. The panic and fear is worse generally than the microbe. Um, don't get caught up in that because that can hurt your immune system by worrying too much, okay? You know, find things that make you laugh. You know, watch a bunch of comedians. Um, do things that base you back into where you're at, where, where you feel good. Come to that base at least every day. Um, I don't know. I mean, I... <laughs> so, I tried to go donate blood. Um, apparently, I'm still eligible, but because I've donated blood is so much over my lifetime, my veins aren't right now. Uh, so they said, oh, your veins are too, are too small. <laughs> oh, no. So all I've been trying to do is help um, my um, at-risk family members and friends, you know, just give information and try to calm down some of those insane things they're saying on social media. Don't drink uh, colloidal silver. You can turn blue. You can be a Smurf. Um, it's a... It doesn't it get go through the body. It can get locked in the body, so it lodges in your kidneys, lodges in your liver, lodges in your skin. Um, Jim Baker is selling it that on Facebook. Uh, he lost Tommy Faye, but still had to get some something shiny, huh? <laughs> um, don't drink bleach. Come on, bleach, Mr. Yucky. It doesn't cure autism. It doesn't cure coronavirus. Um, don't drink too much water. Too much water, you know, I read one little meme that was put on by an elderly person. Oh my God. Drink water every 15 minutes to help wash the coronavirus down into your stomach. Okay. Um, if you drink water every 15 minutes, um, there's something known as water intoxication that can kill you. Um, if you drink too much water, it can cause hyponatremia which can cause confusion, um, seizures, and unconsciousness. You drink bleach, your throat will swell. You drink too much, you eat too much garlic, your throat can swell. Um, you could end up in the ER, and as we know, our healthcare staff in the United States doesn't have enough PPE, personal protective equipment, and our healthcare staff is at high risk for infection with COVID-19. So I wouldn't want to go there. Try to stay out of the ER if you can. Um, people, people will be. Um, panic is not rational. What we need is a rational, global community to approach this. Thank goodness we have good public health, and it's on the local level and state level in the United States right now. That's um, enacting the public health um, and going through. We have. Some federals um, support Dr. Fassi uh, with the NIH has been good. He went through um, the HIV AIDS epidemic uh, pandemic. Um, 
good scientist. You know, he does say some pet or things that cause fear, but he just wants everyone to act like they have it. He doesn't want people to needlessly get hurt or needlessly cause, get the virus and spread it to someone that's high risk. So if you have any family members or children that are partying up in Florida on the beaches, just have them stay away from you for a couple months. <laughs> the um, incubation of this virus is anywhere from uh, three to 24 days. Um, they do recommend the 14 day um, quarantines, but until we know more about this virus, um, I would have them stay away from me for at least 24 days, if it was me. So that's that. So my ALS um, group met this week on a virtual meeting. That was kind of cool. Um, first time in Texas. Uh, we had, uh, you know, our general meeting, we, there was a um, physician that's with um, a local, um, I don't know if it's local, I think it's in the state and maybe national, QRS. Um, discussed um, voluntary um, traits and um, what I was struck by, you know, it's very good information. Um, one thing we definitely want to keep progression numbers on, you know, is finding out what our FVC and our MIP numbers are. Um, that is how they base um, when the need is. Um, I personally, as you know from my last video, and I'm sorry I was very tearful at that time, you know, still getting my head around it. I mean, that was kind of scary. So the testing I've had, so I've had the pulmonary function test, uh, which shows some restriction, that my lung tissue is okay. Um, I had a sleep study. I chose my mask, which, um, that you can get a pillow mask, which goes in your nose. It looks really comfortable. I guess it would be good for talking. Um, I have a deviated septum, so I didn't really want to start off with that. They have several different masks, so they'll find a mask that actually fits your face. You know, um, so I go back to my pulmonologist um, on the 30th, so we'll find out how that is. I don't know, you know, Medicare does have where you can do telehealth. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how it goes, how bad it, um, the COVID-19 hits my area. <laughs> uh, you know, just trying to stay away from um, as many people as I can um, physically. It's kind of funny. I had to um, get something to uh, send some money to a family member to make sure they had enough food. And um, I was standing in line and I was six feet behind another person. Person got behind me. Are you in line? It's like, yeah, I'm just trying to stay away. Uh, <laughs> I've officially decided to stay out of stores now. I was in um, Kroger's uh, the other day and um, two aisles over, I heard someone cough. Now, it could be allergies, but when you start hearing people cough around and there was a positive case in my general region, so time to kind of stay batting down the hatches, you know. Uh, talk to my doctor. I'm still continuing my occupational physical therapy, my neurologist. So, and I found out from the facility that I get um, outpatient um, PTOT, um, it's going to check my temperature when I show and ask me the question. I had to miss uh, Mondays because um, pollen is um, extreme in my area and I had a headache and a sore throat and those were symptoms of coronavirus. <gasps> um, it wasn't. Um, Allegra and Sudafed helped. But I did check with my doctor and he said it was okay. You know, during times like this, you're going to hear a thousand different things. Don't trust everything you read on the internet. Um, don't trust everything that's on YouTube, seriously. Um, trust what your doctor, your healthcare team, your local authorities with public health, um, your stated things and what the CDC and the WHO are recommending. Follow those. You should be safe. Um, I don't know. I mean, if you can, you know, our nurses and our doctors, our respiratory therapists and our PCAs in the United States right now are running into supply problems with their uh, PPE, personal protective equipment. You know, there's not enough correct masks. You can write your senator, you can write the president. You know, we need to get this fixed. We need to have uh, companies um, do the masks. You know, we need to have a better stock. You know, there was less than 10% of the national or the federal um, stockpile. You know, money has been diverted and this has not paid attention. You know, it's like public health has been um, attacked for decades. 
you know, in this epidemic, I am so proud of our um, number one, Dr. Fassi from the NIH, yay, Dr. Fassi, but the local authorities of public health and the universities. I mean, I think that they have really stood up to the backbone. Um, you know, we need to support the CDC, not the political part of it, it should be, we need to support the epidemiologists, the molecular scientists, we need to support that. We need to make sure that we have a good public health system. But the most important thing right now is to make sure our voices are heard to protect our healthcare staff. You know, there will be doctors and nurses that die. There has already been um, a nurse that was retired that died in Chicago, but there are doctors that are in ICU right now that took care of um, COVID-19 patients. If we don't have, they don't have the proper masks, and if the CDC has on their website how nurses should wear bandanas or make fabric masks, they're not going to be protective. You know, that's kind of a scary thing. I mean, hopefully, we never go through this again in this way. Now you think about it when it, through time, uh, the flu, Spanish flu, ni 1918, um, my great grandmother, um, well, my great grandmother's mother, so my great grandmother times two, was a midwife. And she and one of my um, great aunts um, cared for um, people sick with the Spanish flu back in, at, um, 1918, um, you know, they didn't have gloves, they didn't have masks. Now she actually got sick and died. Um, so, you know, there, this Florence Nightingale, I mean, the Crimean War, um, cholera, you know, people, from the beginning of time, people, you know, people will go out to help, but some people will get sick and die. The least, what we can do to protect our first line um, responders, you know, is what we want to do. You know, hopefully we can get a supply of masks, we can get a supply of PPE. You know, think about our paramedics, think about our police officers, our firemen. We wanna make sure everybody's safe. You know, there are, they are heroes going out to protect us. So what we can do is just write a letter, you know. Um, I don't have a company that I can't make, a, you know, N95 or P100 masks. Unfortunately, I can't do that. Um, you know, just we need to stay in this together. Maybe not within six feet of each other, you know, for people that are coming in and out of the house, not people that are family members. You know, if you have a family member that gets sick, you definitely want to um, use separate bathrooms, separate rooms. They should isolate in a room. Um, you know, one thing I want to say is they found, um, you know, I've been watching medical um, and medical people, you know, from around the world about this. There is um, virus shed in stool. So if you can, avoid public restrooms right now. Yeah. And definitely wash your hands before you touch anything if you go to a public restroom. So that's that. Um, so I retired from nursing, yeah. Um, taking care of my family. Um, my little girl is in second grade and she's home until April 10th, you know, so far. You know, I really think this virus will probably go until the end of May, June. Um, some people say August, you know, there is a federal plan in the United States for 18 months. Usually that's like with the influenza, how it goes away and then it comes back the next winter. Who knows? I mean, this is a new virus. It's a novel virus. You know, we just have to give it time you know, ask for help if you need it. If you need someone to go grocery shopping, you know, make a call. Um, you know, you want them to leave it on the step, do that. You know, just you can un unbag and you can wash your hands or your caregiver can wash their hands. And you know, you can't be too afraid. Um, checking your mail. After about 24 hours, nothing's gonna be on this. It, the virus doesn't last on cardboard or paper for over 24 hours. So you should be safe from checking the mail. You know, just think smart and you have questions, talk to your doctor. If you have symptoms, call your doctor and um, your local public health, you know, they, or the CDC line there will give you recommendations. But, um, you know, there's a lot of fears out there. You can't let it get to you. You already got something, if you're an ALS patient, you got something that's gonna get you anyway. So, you know, the time is, the thing is to enjoy what time you have. Um, and, you know, the, find the, the, the silver lining in each day. You know, there's always something good. 
you know. Well, I hope you take care, and I'll get back with you. I hope this hasn't been too jumbled. Um, I took a shower, and my allergies are getting me, so, uh, you know, maybe I'll go outside and sneeze and see how many people I get horrified. <laughs> All right, you guys take care, and I'll talk to you soon.